another thing we want to say here is um, this is actually uh, not a method. We made this a property in this case. And this could have easily just been a function. But uh, just to, to show different ways you can do things here, um, what I did is I defined it as a property. So we have public game object next free. And property declaration allows you to do get. And if you also have the ability to set, you can do set. But this is going to be a read-only property, so we're just going to leave it as is. All right, so we're all set there. We can uh, we can now grab our free objects, and we can use them. So we have here uh, the link player manager class is uh, real simple. All it has right now is uh, bullet prefab and heads up text, uh, head up text apparently. And if you look over here, you can see that. The script has the head up text and the bullet prefab, and it's literally just pointing to this GUI text object, and this is pointing to our bullet prefab. So, as we mentioned before, in our what we want to do is in start, we want to create an object recycler. Okay, so let's go ahead and first create ourselves an instance variable. We'll make this private. So it's going to be of type object recycler. And let's go ahead and instance. So we have recycler equals new object recycler. And we want to pass it in the prefab. So we're going to call it bullet prefab. And let's just say we don't expect, uh, this is a slow paced game, so we don't expect to use any more than three bullets. So let's just go ahead and instantiate that with uh, with three bullets here. Okay. So there's a method down here that uh, that's already filled in for you here, and this is uh, not really pertinent to to link. So um, so I'm just going to glance over this really quickly. So it's a it's an enumerator. So it's designed so that we can call it in a coroutine, and it just says shoot bullet, and it takes in a bullet. So what it does is first thing it does is it sets the bullet transform position to the current transform position. So it's going to set it to our current position, and then it's going to apply a force, and the force is just going to be the transform position uh, in a forward direction, and we're just going to apply that to the rigid body. So it's essentially at this point just taking the bullet, putting it in our position, and applying a force that's going to be directly out from us. And uh, in this coaching here, we're going to do a yield wait for seconds, so it's going to wait for three seconds, and uh, after three seconds, this isn't filled in yet, but we're going to recycle the bullet. So when you're working with an object recycler like this, when you're done with the object, uh, in our case a bullet, you want to make sure that you free the object. And we haven't filled in the free object method yet, but we'll do that in just a moment. So let's jump into our onGUI method. And what we're going to want to do here in onGUI is we're going to want to grab the next free object. And if we remember back here, we uh, we already created the next free method, and it's always going to return an active valid game object from our prefab, and we'll shoot the bullet here. So we're going to call start coroutine. We want to do this in a coroutine, and we'll call it coroutine with that game object. Okay, so let's see what we have so far. We got no errors. We're all good. So let's just go ahead and play. We have our fire button, and let's go ahead and shoot. All right, so it works. And you can see we can keep shooting, and we're going to keep instantiating objects. We're, we're not yet reusing objects, and uh, that's a problem because we're just going to end up uh, running out of memory if we keep doing this. So let's go ahead and, and uh, jump back into our object recycler and fill in the free object method. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty simple method. All we're going to do is go ahead and say object to free dot game object dot active equals false. So that right there is all it takes to free our object. Because remember, when we're looking for a free object, all we're doing is looking for where active is false. So as soon as we do that, it's going to be ready to go. All right, so let's jump back over here. And we're going to uncomment this. So this is going to, now it's going to fire the bullet. It's going to wait three seconds 
and then it's going to go ahead and call free object. So what this should do is, is get us recycling our objects now instead of just creating endless amounts of objects. So let's see, we have our three bullet prefab clones you can see right here. So let's fire, you can see one became active and there, it's gone. Now it's, uh, it's inactive again. So let's fire three and we can see they're all active and now they're gone. So let's go ahead and fire four and see what happens. So you can see our recycler noticed that there was no free one, so it went ahead and created a new one. And now we can go ahead and fire four and we won't have any instantiations. So the object recycler is going to manage all that for us. So there's, there's one last little thing we're going to add to it here, just to, as kind of a, a fun little uh, neat aside. Seeing as how we learned about events last time, let's go ahead and add ourselves a delegate and event on here. And the purpose of it is going to be uh, whenever the, uh, the object recycler recycles an object, we'll just go ahead and fire an event. And uh, it'll be uh, useful for if you had, uh, for instance, uh, your bullet count on screen. You'd be able to show how many bullets you've used. We'll call it object recycler changed event. And it's going to take two things. An integer for the available, so the number of available bullets, and an integer for the total. Okay, so let's make an event to go with that delegate. We're going to use our handler there, and we'll call it on object recycler changed. Let's actually spell that a little bit better. There, there we go. Okay, and you can see I already uh, had an empty method here to fire recycle event. So, uh, so let's go ahead and fill that in. So what we always do with our events, remember, is we're always going to make sure that it's not equal to null before we call it. If it's null, we'll get an exception. So we only want to fire the event in the case where it's not null. We have an actual listener. So let's do a little bit more link here. So we're going to say var all free. And what we want to do this time in our link statement is we want to count up the number, the total number of objects in our recycler that are free available for use. So again, we're going to use syntax uh, just like SQL. So from item in object list, we want the items that are not active. So the ones that are free and available are the ones that are not active. And you can see actually I have lots of different methods here that are very, very SQL-like. And uh, you know, maybe in a future tutorial, we'll go into some of the, the neater aspects in here. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple. Make sure we can uh, we can make something easy enough to understand so that you can actually apply it to your games. So we want the ones where active is false. So now we've found the ones that are false, and we want to select it. OK. So perfect. We have the number of uh, free objects now. And if you remember, our, our handler here wants the total number of objects and the number available. So we, uh, we almost have enough information to fire this. We have all free. And now this, um, this all free object right now is an I enumerable. And uh, you know, if you want more information on that, I highly recommend just doing a quick Google search. You'll find the, the Microsoft documentation for .NET, which is all completely valid. But uh, it has a whole bunch of different methods available to it. And these are extension methods, like I, I mentioned before. And you can see everything with this little arrow here is an extension method. So what we want to do is we want to actually find the total number. So there's a count method. Perfect. So we want to pass in the count. And now we also want to pass in the total number that we have. And that's really easy. We, uh, we have our object list. And we can pass in the count there. All right, so our file recycled event is, uh, is all filled in, but uh, currently we aren't calling it anywhere. So there's two places where we'll want to call this. There's two places where objects change state. So right here, we're setting active to true. So this is a good spot to fire it. And here, we're setting active to false, another good spot. OK, so let's just go ahead and make sure we have no errors. We have no errors. Everything's working. It's not doing anything, though. So there's no event listeners right now, so those events aren't being fired at all. So let's just go ahead into our link player manager and let's listen to this event. 
So before we saw in our previous tutorial, uh, listening to an event by having our delegate be a member variable or a member function. So in this case, um, what we're going to do, you can see we have our on object recycle changed event. We're going to go ahead and use uh, what's called an anonymous delegate here. And you can see uh, MonoDevelop is actually smart enough to fill it in for us. So this is what we want. This is our delegate call. So we go ahead and pop that in here. And this is uh, this function will be called anytime that event's fired. So let's just go ahead and change our heads up text or head up text. And what we're going to do is just say available bullets, total bullets, and we get our available and total, so we'll just fill those in. So we're just going to write a quick little text string showing basically what the inventory of our bullet system is this particular point in time. So let's fire it and take a look. Okay, so two available, three total. Three available, three. Okay, so it works exactly as planned. So let's shoot three. So you can see we have none available, and as they become available, you'll see that the event gets fired and it updates our inventory for us. So let's see what happens when we fire a whole bunch and uh, go over our limit and have to create some. You can see the total bullets is going up. Now watch that as the available bullets are freed, that number will go up too. So when we have 17 bullets now, chances are we aren't going to have to instantiate anymore. So our game will be able to go ahead and play smoothly from here on out. All right, that covers the basics of Link. Hopefully you, uh, you learned something that you'll be able to use in your game here. Uh, the Object Recycler class is super handy, something that you'll use a lot in mobile games. And actually, it's, uh, it's something you probably want to be using in non-mobile as well. It's just a real handy class, and you can, you can always add methods to this class as you go along. And uh, it's just a great way to get your objects reused and, uh, and free up some resources. Thanks for watching.